Good morning and welcome. Uh, Commissioner, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this pivotal uh, discussion session, uh, one that holds particular significance given the uh, multitude of challenges facing the African continent today. Um, whether it's ongoing conflicts, uh, unstable political landscapes, or the progressively urgent repercussions of climate change. Uh, these issues collectively create an environment uh, where managing migration becomes an increasingly complex endeavor. It is our privilege to have from the African Union Ambassador Sasuma Minata Samate, Commissioner for Health, Humanitarian Affairs, and Social Development to shed light on Africa's vision for fostering safe and orderly migration amidst these complexities. Commissioner Samate stands at the nexus of policymaking and implementation, grappling daily with the challenges and opportunities that migration presents for Africa. Her insights are not only reflective of the African Union's strategic goals, but also point towards the types of collaborative efforts that can potentially reshape how we think about and manage cross-border movements. Commissioner Samati will delve into how the African Union intends to foster uh, and reconcile the conflicting demands uh, of border control and humanitarian concerns and align its overarching mandate with the realities on the ground. Uh, importantly, she will also explore avenues of cooperation between Africa, Europe, and other stakeholders. The goal is to develop more effective standards and practices that not, that not only respond to immediate crisis, but also set the foundation for a more sustainable and humane approach to migration. As we look ahead, it is partnerships like this, underpinned by a shared commitment to human dignity and global stability that offer the best hope for managing the challenges and maximizing the opportunities that migration presents for Africa. Honorable Commissioner, we are eager to hear your perspectives on these pressing issues and from the vantage point of your current position uh, at the African Union, your previous position as Commissioner for Political Affairs and as a former State Minister in your beloved home country, Burkina Faso, uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs and uh, Regional uh, Cooperation, um, you have 30 years of experience in diplomacy, international relations, governance, peace and security. And ladies and gentlemen, in her spare time, she's also a farmer. So please join me <laughs> in giving her a warm welcome uh, as she uh, shares her thoughts with us. Thank you. <laughs> Merci. Thanks so much for your kind words. I would like, uh, first of all, to say good morning. I just arrived one hour ago, and uh, it is always a pleasure for me to be with you. Uh, this is my second time to be here. I can see um, the engagement of Europe, all of you, to help Africa to find a solution. And I would like to sincerely say thank you to uh, I see MPD for the fruitful cooperation we have and the support and also engagement together to, to find a solution. Uh, this conversation is very important for, uh, for me because uh, 
uh, you need also to hear from Africa what we are doing, what's the problem, and I know it's a problem for Europe, it's a problem for us also. When I see uh, our young people dying in the sea and what happened lately to Lampetusa, I said something needs to be done and we are working and it is a pleasure for me to be with you this morning and uh, I'm ready to... to you will hear for, from me and also uh, I will try to say something to respond to your question, my appreciation for uh, the uh, today conversation. Thank you very much, thank you. So let us begin. Um, our audience would like to know what are the key factors currently shaping migration dynamics on the African continent? Uh, thank you so much. Um, you mentioned my previous life as a political commissioner, and now I'm talking about social development or a humanitarian. And I realized that uh, the root causes when I started my career, we were complaining the same situation continue. I will start by conflict. Why we Africa cannot find a solution to conflict? Are you to uh, explain to our member states we need to sit together because Fighting now in Africa is not foreign. It was at the beginning of ex uh, independence, it, it was a country country uh, a conflict. Now it's internal. Why we cannot find a solution? And I will add that one now what is happening in Sahel? I'm from Sahel, I'm from Burkina Faso, I know Mali, I know Niger, I know uh, all West Africa, and I'm working for African Union. Why this new and where these new people come with terrorist attacks regularly and going with a movement of, of, of person? We have usually forced displaced person, refugees. Now we have millions and millions of uh, IDPs uh, linked with conflict, uh, terrorist attack, and political instability. As I mentioned, my country is part of coup uh, d'etat in, in Africa, we have Mali, I know, and uh, also lately Niger and Gabon. Why we have this, this uh, coup d'etat? This is political instability, which is, uh, what the root cause of that? As I mentioned, the, 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 this, um, in Sahel, they upload uh, 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 the coup d'etat, why? Because it is a hope, hope that the militaries will finish with uh, this terrorist attack. And also, I want to close my eye and say everything will all, all right. There is issue of governance. We need to improve our governance, political gover gov governance, and economic governance and social. We are working on that one to be sure that uh, uh, our young people want to uh, be migration, and uh, if they want to be migrant, they need to move uh, safely and also in a regular manner. I will talk about the economic factor. Yeah, high level of poverty and uh, limits opportunities for our youth. And uh, unemployment, if you, I was explaining to my communication, I, I said we need to do something. We see, when I am running in Africa, I saw many well-educated people, but there is no job opportunity. And I was saying to King, maybe we need to go to agriculture. You mentioned that I'm a farmer, it's true. Uh, I'm, I, I add another one, I'm designer also, to show <laughs> to show to our young people, you can have this high level of uh, opportunity, but you can go also and farm. My husband retired, we are farming, we have uh, tons and tons of rice, and also when I left organization, I said, let us show to our young people there is there are opportunities in English. This is my own fabrication, my dress, because I want to show, not because it's I need, but I want to show to new generation that we can stay in Africa and have opportunity. And Africa is a populated continent. There is a debate about it. No, it's not true. But we have a young people. If you count between 15 and 45, in some country there are 60 to 75 percent. This is very important. If something not do, we are we are sensitizing for to limit also uh, 
uh, children, but uh, this is not easy. If you don't have well-educated people, it's difficult. And also talking about uh, why people need to go uh, to Europe, because when you have migrant or uh, people leaving our diaspora, when they will return, uh, they said there are good opportunities. Uh, w if you take a uh, uh, hundred euro, they will uh, convert is uh, sixty-five thousand. That encourage people, but these people won't explain what is happening in uh, Europe, and uh, they recruit them. And uh, now it's became a big business uh, with uh, this. Uh, how do you call slavery? I will say slavery. They will come and say there is or there are opportunity. Please give me 5,000 uh, euro. I said with 5,000 euro, you can do something in Africa. Why are you plan to go? I was in Tunisia. What happened there? I was there with commissioner in charge of peace. When I saw this migrant, I said, please, can you accept? Because we have this ATM with uh, Niger and uh, Rwanda. Can you accept to return? I will see with partner, you will go back home. They said never. If we need also to change our mind. It will start uh, school and explaining them uh, there are opportunities and also uh, avoid this, uh, um, uh, how do you call this, uh, traf, traf, uh, how do you call this criminal groups? Because they come isolately in my village where we cannot uh, do many things, activities, and uh, these people are coming. I was explained to my aunt, please tell them they won't accept two things. They will take you a lot of money. You became terrorists when you became you want, you cannot get out, you will die. They will kill you, or forces will kill you. And also to explain them that is not true, uh, is a, we said in French, mirage. You won't succeed, but uh, uh, it's important for us to work together to see. And finally, about uh, the dynamic is very complex. Uh, it is uh, complex, and uh, for us, uh, we need to push together and uh, to help Africa, how we can uh, find a solution to this root causes, uh, the complex root causes. But uh, I don't think Africa only can do it. I know it is important for Europe, but uh, we are doing our best also to find solution to this uh, migration pr uh, problem. These are a few responses to your question. First question, thank you. Thank you very much, thank you. Um, one of the uh, key factors that uh, one can also look at is the uh, fact that it's not only uh, poverty that drives young people uh, in wanting to travel, because uh, from personal experience, uh, I do know that uh, uh, some people that have good jobs, as you say, 5,000 euros saved, is not, you know, is not a small uh, uh, amount of money. If yeah. you already have 5,000 euros and you're tr you want to use that to travel, that means you have some means. I think one of the key factors is the hopelessness that young people feel because of the corruption in, our, in some of our system. They don't see a way out. They don't know the minister. They don't have a godfather. And so they feel that um, hopelessness uh, in terms of advancing in their lives. Uh, and, um, and, and this is, I think this is a systemic uh, issue about governance uh, uh, and, and mostly corruption that needs also to be addressed. Um, my qu uh, second question is, uh, how, do you, how does the African Union Commission advise its member states to navigate policy tensions between border control on one side migrant protection on the other side. Could you share a concrete example of an action you have taken to address both orderly and safe migration? Thank you uh, for that question. Um, I think our uh, peer who created the uh, OAU, then uh, African Union, they knew that this problem will happen, and uh, they didn't 
uh, stay and say, okay, we have a problem, we will have a problem, we won't do anything. No, they did something and it is in our charter and constitute act of the African Union. And uh, before Corona in February 2020, the African Union strategy for better integrated border uh, governance was adopted by our leaders, the head of state on government. It was a normative contribution and uh, we are working with our member state to domesticate uh, this strategy. Borders are understood uh, as instrument to promote peace, security, and stability in Africa, and uh, to facilitate regional integration. And we have many, we share the continent in five regions, and uh, we said uh, they are the pillar of the African Union. Uh, we need integration. If we have integration, that will facilitate the task of our, our uh, uh, citizen. And also border, border uh, uh, are in the, so that uh, it is a political, uh, political aspect to help our uh, citizen and uh, we, we are working. I have under my department the protocol on free movement. Uh, we are working, we have free trade CFTA, and uh, we are working on free movement. It's not easy, but we are working on it. But to respond quite concretely, we, we have uh, to address these issues uh, with uh, the governance of border through five pillars. I will, uh, maybe question will come, I will just uh, mention the five. And the pillar one is mobility, migration, and trade facilitation. That uh, is uh, an alignment with uh, our uh, revised uh, migration policy framework for Africa. And uh, as I mentioned, we have the protocol on free movement, free movement of person, good, and the right of establishment, we, which is working in West Africa. Sometimes uh, you will travel just with an ID, but uh, uh, some region they are not uh, ready to go uh, to that the, the, the free movement, but uh, it's improving. And uh, some members said they didn't ratify this protocol, but they opened the border. You will have visa at your arrival, and uh, we can have both. Uh, like Rwanda, Rwanda ratified this protocol. The country is open, but they can ensure because security issue uh, make, makes people not uh, uh, opening the border. And the second pillar is to turn border from barrier to bridge uh, by easing mobility related uh, restriction and facilitating interaction between borders uh, community in West Africa. We are from a border to another one, you will find the same ethnic group and uh, you are speaking the same language that facilitate and it is a pillar, one of our pillar. The third one is uh, policies uh, of integration, trade and mobility. Uh, to make international and national capital the successful implementation, uh, that depends also on uh, properly functioning uh, border. And uh, it is very important for us uh, to have the potential to be transformed uh, into uh, grounds with, uh, on which policies are operationalized um, uh, to allow our, uh, the free movement of people. And uh, sometimes they are saying that uh, I, 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 I'm enthusiastic to see free trade but how we can have free trade without a free movement. And now we are working, and I'm quite sure we will, it will take time, but we need uh, this uh, 15 country ratifying, and we need your support to push our member state to accept. If we have this free movement, uh, youth vacant. If I know I have, I'm Bukinabe, I can have job opportunity in Cote d'Ivoire, in uh, Tunisia, why not? But without that one, it might be diff uh, difficult. And the pillar four is cooperating border management. This is also important uh, for a cohesive government response to the challenges. Uh, we need good management and uh, cooperation because security is a issue, uh, cooperation with, between uh, our security 
security people to, if I'm a terrorist, I would like to go. And uh, with, uh, if we had network, they will check what is happening, who is she, and uh, they won't allow me. But we are working on it. I'm uh, confident that uh, not maybe I will uh, uh, finish my duties, but I know it will happen because we don't have a choice. These are uh, some key issues uh, on uh, what we are doing and uh, to be sure that uh, our migrant will be legal migrant not. And also, my, in internal Africa, there, is, there are opportunities is for you to know that this is a good opportunity. When I, I mentioned agriculture, when I started, they said, what do you need? You have enough? I said, yes, I have. But uh, for me, I'm the daughter of a farmer. My parents were doing it. Why you cannot do it? And sometimes they come to me and say, I said, you see me, I'm doing things to have a little bit of opportunity. Why you cannot do it? We are working on it, but I'm quite sure together we can find a solution. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, my next question to you is, uh, what initiatives in the area of migration has the African Union recently launched? And what priorities do these address in this complex context? What kinds of partnerships are you looking to establish, whether with specific countries, regions, or organizations? Yes, before that, I forgot something very important in West Africa is working is uh, this one-stop border. I see between Togo and Burkina, they both are together in many countries where we have uh, many regions doing it. This uh, one-stop border uh, post is very important. And he, uh, our uh, East African community is adopting comprehensive framework on it. And I mentioned ECOWAS. Uh, we have is common in ECOWAS. It's easy. Both co you just finish here and you continue. I was uh, in Lesotho at the border with South Africa. It's easy. You cross it in uh, 15 minutes just to stamp your passport and you continue. Coming about uh, initiative uh, in the area of migration, we launched many, many things and uh, we have, uh, we develop and finalize the policy framework on combating and preventing trafficking in a human being and smuggling mi migrant. This was adopted by our uh, head of state uh, policy framework and also uh, to see how I, as I mentioned, we need to internal, uh, to domesticate these uh, ideas. And also, I mentioned at the beginning the extension of cooperation on emergency transit mechanism between uh, the government of uh, Rwanda and the African Union and also Niger. Yes, Niger is uh, in difficult situation now. We are cooperating with UNHR to see. It was about migration from, migrant from Libya to settle them in uh, Rwanda and also Niger. It is working with uh, Rwanda, Niger, yes, we don't know what will happen due to political uh, situation. And, uh, uh, we envisage to extend this, uh, the MOU with uh, other countries, but uh, as I mentioned, people are afraid uh, if I accept to have this ATM, uh, maybe terrorists or uh, banditry, and, uh, but we are working also to see how we can uh, uh, seek a solution in Africa and uh, uh, settling our people inside. And also the resettlement of uh, refugees. Um, I was commissioner of political affairs. We have uh, with, uh, uh, one year, uh, 2019, to talk about uh, our root causes of this forced displacement. They are the same with a migration issue, but we encourage also our member states to accept these people, they never request to leave the country. And uh, I see is ca coming because of Equatorial Guinea, we are working. Uh, the president of Equatorial Guinea was the champion, is the champion on uh, forced displacement. Uh, we visited uh, many camps together with him and he accepted to take uh, refugees to settle them. Uh, things are not easy because the process is long. Uh, uh, refugees in uh, uh, Ethiopia, 
We want to settle them uh, in uh, uh, Equatorial Guinea. We are working on that, and we encourage other member states to accept. If uh, my uh, refugees are in your country, giving them opportunity like what Uganda is doing, more than one million uh, uh, refugees, and you won't see difference between them and uh, local communities. And if there is project, the project for all of them, uh, we need all African country to do so that will avoid also migration issue. And uh, we want to ensure that uh, our members have capacity and uh, tool to sustainable, sustainable re reintegration of uh, these returnees. When the conflict finishes, you return home. Uh, in your community, you need uh, opportunity. And uh, this one is very important for that. And also, uh, the task force, you all hear about this task force between uh, uh, African Union, European Union, and uh, UN with uh, UNHR, with uh, IOM. We are working together to revitalize this, uh, this uh, task force. It's not easy, but uh, with what is happening now, uh, it also a root cause is climate change. What happened in Libya and flood every, everywhere, desertification, we have this climate change. We need a COP27. We are going for COP28. We need something to be done on a, a, a climate change issue that will allow our people to farm. If I farm and water come and uh, it, it takes everything, what can I do? <laughs> I have to survive with that encourage. But we need uh, uh, the support and also the partnership to establish uh, uh, between uh, Euro Europe, we have partnership win-win, uh, but we need more than that to be sure that uh, it's not the solution when I see things happening. Uh, we need to, to have strong cooperation and equitable per, uh, partnership and uh, consolidated rather than fragmented and uh, disjoint partnership. This won't uh, find solution. We need, uh, because if you take one country and agree with the country, the country alone cannot. I saw what was happening in uh, Tunisia. I was there all north part. We cannot solve the problem only in Tunisia, ignoring uh, Algeria, ignoring Libya, ignoring the origin uh, of this migrant coming from uh, uh, West Africa, and now everywhere you will find people coming from South Sudan, transiting by Sahel and going to Europe. We need uh, to work together. A partnership uh, it must, must be a benefit for Africa, and uh, we need uh, a more strengthened continent-to-continent -continent mode of engagement of partnership. Um, the manner I see things is like we are opposing a country to a country, uh, that we won't find a solution in that manner. This is a very important, a strong partnership and win-win partnership. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, this uh, uh, comes to the end of my questions, uh, but I'm sure our audience uh, uh, have uh, tons of questions for you. Oh. So let's get to it. And um, participants uh, online also have uh, questions. So maybe... Uh, um, we can get some help in terms of, uh, there's a young lady there with a microphone, please raise your hands if you have questions. Anyone, question? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, while people get their thoughts together, uh, we already have questions from uh, our online participants. Okay. So let's uh, start with that. Mm -hmm. um, Africa has witnessed a significant increase in border, cross-border movements. How can we ensure that protection, uh, how can we ensure the protection of migrants? Uh, to ensure protection, I will say we start by domesticating our strategies. Everything is there. But we have problem with our member state to domesticate. We are working to tell them we cannot continue like that. We need to domesticate uh, this uh, 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 instrument. And also the protection of migrants. We are all Africans. 
I cannot understand that I would like to go to another country and I will be discriminated. We are working on it, uh, we are sensitizing, we organize uh, training to, to, to allow our member state to uh, domesticate this instrument and we are uh, training people to train also internally how we can find a solution to this uh, 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 border movement. In Africa, we used to have movement. More, more than 60% of migration is in Africa. Uh, before, a few years back, you won't see Burkina Bay going to Europe, uh, they were inside. And because uh, the border, uh, there is no, there is control, but you can continue uh, to cross the border border and you have the same ethnic group, you speak the same language, we need more protection because difficulties of economy and security issues, uh, 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 these things make the movement difficult, but uh, we are working on it. And also we have an instrument uh, convention adopted by, by our member states. We are pushing for ratification to see African uh, solution to African problems. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions from the room? Good morning. Thank you very much. Um, acknowledging the multitude of issues that um, uh, Africa is uh, facing and the interplay, um, from the European side, often a lot of focus is on return and reintegration and readmission. Is the African Union uh, supporting uh, their member states in uh, building systems for return reintegration? Thank you. Uh, yes, we are supporting. We have uh, some program like uh, joint migration. We had a program how we can manage this, uh, this um, uh, how do you call a migration situation to ensure when you left your country to be sure that uh, transiting countries and uh, uh, destination uh, we can find a solution to that. It is very important for us to work together. If we are not working together to fight this uh, uh, situation, it might be difficult. And our member states are engaged to see so because I used to say it's shame for us also, Africa, to see our young people going. It cannot be, but uh, there, and we are going uh, next summit to put this question on the table of uh, our head of state to say, uh, you are doing something not enough, you not need to do more. And we will have concrete example what is happening now and also difficulties with uh, dismissing migrants. They are concerned of this problem, but we are working on it to find solution. And we need your pressure also to our member states. They need to improve the governance issues I, I mentioned. You mentioned corruption and also in a, in a uh, inequality, I don't know how you... Inequality? In, inequality if uh, resources. You will see, uh, that also part of coup d'etat, you will see uh, some people enjoying uh, the resources of the country and others are poor. How you can, I can be happy and my neighbor, my neighbors are not happy. They don't have three meals per day. And uh, I think they are concerned, uh, and I'm quite sure our leader won't have a choice. With this new generation, uh, if we don't change, uh, they will oblige us to change and going in the street and uh, we'll continue with uh, this coup d'etat. This is what I can say to respond to your question. All right, thank you for that. Uh, I'll take another question from online. Uh, how do the African Union and heads of state look inwards to ensure a stable political and economic environment so as to increase positive gains? Uh, it is a little, <laughs> little bit uh, difficult question, uh, political stability. Mm. Yes, it goes with governance, the corruption. We need uh, political stability. And I realize, uh, now I'm co commissioner of political affairs, why we don't have uh, 
uh, in some countries working free, fair, and democratic election. I, uh, in Africa, they know me. I was going for election. I said, if you need uh, stability, you need clean elections. And uh, we observe. We went in the field, we see, we saw what was happening. And I say, I won't take mic and uh, crying that I saw rigging election, but I said, I cannot sh uh, shut my mouth, I will go and request meeting with the president and say, look, Mr. President, we saw in this area what was happening. If you don't find a solution, what will happen next, uh, you will be, if you don't say that African Union didn't say anything. But we cannot take Mike and saying, yeah, we saw this, we saw that. Uh, we, it's for your own security. If you want to enjoy your, 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 your power, you need to have everybody on board. And I remember one country I, non, I won't mention, uh, the opposition won, uh, they have more than six million, and the winner, uh, eight million. I say you cannot govern, govern without these people. You need to do something. And they were angry against me. I was in the newspaper, criti they are criticizing me. I said, yes, it's fine. But if you don't do something, you will be in a problem. They refused. Then one day I saw <laughs> discussion of B2B with uh, opposition. I said, you won't have to. You refuse to do your job and you are delaying it. You should do it. And uh, finally, it happened. Uh, economic environment, yes, this is very important. Everything is in the need the Africa. Economic, yes. Why we are producing, we have mine we cannot transform in Africa. We need also uh, private people to engage. We are engaging them uh, to have economic stability and say, you need to do something for your, your continent and also to avoid corruption in contracts. We don't have, I see my country, we have uh, in my region fruit, mangoes, but mangoes, we have our farm, but we cannot take this mango to go no far because there are no roads. Uh, when I go with my car, I will <laughs> put the car in garage. We need economic uh, transformation and social is going with it. Thank you, thank you. Uh, any other question from the uh, audience? Yeah, the microphone. Thank you very much. Um, the post Cotonou Agreement was uh, recently uh, ratified. It includes um, provisions on migration and return uh, cooperation. Could you please expand a bit on how you expect this uh, to um, improve or affect EU-African cooperation on migration. Thank you. Uh, please, um, uh, I didn't quite get the first part of the question. Yeah, me too. Ah. Uh, the, uh, po it's about the um, post-Cotonou um, agreement, uh, which was recently agreed and ratified, um, and the relevant provisions on migration and return cooperation. Thank you. Post-Cotonou agreement? Post-Cotonou. Right? Post-Cotonou agreement. Post uh, uh, cooperation with European Union or uh, co yeah, <laughs> uh, yes, it is very <laughs> important that one. <laughs> but uh, and it's not only post Cotonou. We used to uh, we were here for for this summit, uh, Europe Africa. But I was a little bit disappointed. Me commissioner in charge of migration, I couldn't attend this meeting. Oh. Because they said head of state, yes, they are not the person implementing internally. We need also African Union, we need also our, uh, our um, how do you call, uh, uh, citizen and uh, our organization, uh, regional cooperation. And we need uh, to work together uh, at national level to implement it and also at the uh, level of our communi regional communities, then also at the African Union uh, uh, level, and also we cannot do that one without cooperation. We need win-win cooperation to implement it and to see, and also we have to sit together and uh, to, 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 I, I don't know how to, uh, 
truth to it. Don't be afraid, I will, I'm not happy, I will say, and you, you are not happy. What is working in this uh, uh, Lome uh, agreement? Why is not working? What, what are challenges and uh, what can be the solution? Maybe we are wrong, we need to rectify and find solution. It is very important, but we salute it is uh, a step but uh, it's not uh, a panacea. We need uh, to revisit all of this uh, document with our partners. Right, okay, thank you. Uh, there's also a question here. Thank you very, thank you very much. I will be quite brief. Um, I'm interested in the population growth situation in Africa, and we are, there are UN projections that by the year 2015, the population in Africa will, will nearly double. That's in, uh, in one generation's time. Do you have any policies to address that subject, and do you have any, uh, any reactions from your member states of the African Union? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you are right. I know uh, Europe criticized uh, that uh, uh, we, we, have, we have, for one wife, it can be between uh, four and six and more than that. Yes, we are working on it. I remember his head of state saying the problem of my country is uh, population, which is true. But if I see an example are, are like DRC, it's a, it's a huge country. Maybe uh, to find a solution is also to have opportunities in all the region. I see Mali also. Mali is a big country, but population cannot go. If we have uh, this good repartition of population uh, in the continent, it will work. But uh, now it's not working. I think the first thing to do is education. If you educate a woman, she will know what is happening. She won't have this big pregnancy always, always one, two, six, eight. For me, it's unacceptable to have it destroy the, the health of the woman, to have many children. And we have our own policy. I see in many countries we have, I don't know how you explain the, the medicine to avoid uh, pregnancy. And also uh, for our youth starting by school, primary school, secondary school to sensitize your life. If you have a pregnancy before uh, you are 18, 20 years, you might have problem to sensitize. And uh, in, our, uh, in our countries, when you have baby, you go to hospital, they will explain you, you will have your baby, but you need uh, for your own health to have minimum two, three years between your children to give you enough money to educate them, to give you uh, enough opportunity to work for yourself. But it's not this, and we are working with uh, our religious people. That's also a problem because uh, you will have some countries saying, no, uh, it's not uh, if to take this medicine, that means uh, uh, a problem. We are working with them, and everything goes with uh, education. If uh, men, uh, women, children, we are all educated, it will avoid. I won't be happy to have 10, 10 children, how I can take care, and I'm a farmer. Before, it was... Uh, how do you call it? labor uh, medweaver? We said uh, you have people to work in your farm. We are not anymore farming. No, many people are not farming. Yes, we need to educate everybody. We are working. We have policies on it, and all member states we have it. But it is difficult. Yeah, I fully agree. One billion uh, for four hundred thousand people. That is a lot. It will double, and many countries. Uh, it is uh, difficult. I was living uh, in one country, and uh, in uh, less than 30 years, the population doubled. We cannot continue like that. Uh, economically, it's moving, but uh, destroyed by this uh, population, huge population. And uh, if we don't control that one, we will, st we will continue to have uh, migration or forced displaced person and also conflict. If uh, these young people, this huge amount of people, they don't have opportunity, it will be a big problem. We are working on it, uh, but sometimes uh, it's difficult. Uh, myself, uh, 
I remember uh, my, my mom was complaining and saying, no, no, no. Then my sister came back from Cote d'Ivoire with six children. When I gave her rice in one mom finished, she said, oh, you were right to say that we need to limit children. <laughs> that uh, it is important we are working on it, but these things are not e easy, but we won't give up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this uh, has been very enlightening. Uh, and uh, we have now come to the end of this session. Um, uh, what message, very quickly, what message do you want to leave us with uh, today regarding the future of migration governance in Africa? Uh, just, just under one minute. <laughs> yes, um, we need uh, support from our partners. As I mentioned, win-win cooperation. And also, I need all of you to sensitize our leaders. We need to change the narrative. Uh, we need uh, to, be, to build a better Africa for Africans. We said we have our uh, uh, Agenda 2063. We have Agenda 2030 of the UN. But if we don't change the narrative, if we don't have support for our partners, and working at national level and a regional level, because we agree now to have one summit for by, uh, per year, and the second one is working with uh, our re re five recs, eight recs, and that one is important. We need support on our uh, on uh, support for African Union uh, recs, and also our at national level. And uh, together we are strong. Together we can build that Africa we want, uh, a better life, peace, security, and stability for all of us. And uh, it is important, but we cannot do that one uh, without uh, uh, our partners of Europe. Europe, we have uh, history. <laughs> uh, 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 partnership we need uh, to improve the manner we are working. If we improve, we can find solution to this forced displacement, particularly in uh, migration issues. And we have international, uh, uh, the compact on migration, we have at our, our framework, we need your support to implement these uh, uh, old strategies and uh, uh, protocol and uh, old treaties we have. We need your support on that. But we will do our part also as African Union and as Africans. Thank you very much. Please help me to uh, thank. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Merci. Thank you. So. Thank you. Thank you.